If your info tanks and make no mistake, you've come to the right place. Just give to Neil the time to straight up blow your mind with a new show of drawing a blank. Ah, yes. I feel like we could all use the aid of magical cat doctors living out in the woods right about now. So welcome back everyone to Drawing a Blank. This week we'll be drawing some medicine cats. Specifically, medicine cats who have been protagonists in the main series books up until this point. This video will be more akin to a Simi Speaks because I have a lot of thoughts when it comes to how medicine cats are handled in this series. So buckle in, it's time to get analytical. I actually wanted to do this analysis on medicine cats for a long time. Medicine cats are the clan's doctors, they're linked to Star Clan, a symbol of what makes the clans different from other cat colonies, and they're arguably secondary leaders to their clans. A medicine cat's role is vital to clan culture, and without one, a clan can fall into chaos pretty quickly. While not strictly pacifists, most medicine cats only learn enough battle moves to defend themselves, and unlike other clan positions, they honor their own code of rules that comes before the warrior code, especially if it means saving someone's life. Medicine cats hold a position unlike any other clan cats, and just as it so happens, they also tend to be some of my favorite characters of the series. Jayfeather, Alderheart, Shadowsight, Cinderpelt, Puddleshine, Mothwing, Hawkheart, Yellowfang, Barkface, Running Nose, Mothflight, Goosefeather, Echo Song. There's so many good medicine cat characters, and I'm not even naming all of them. But there is a bit of a problem when it comes to having medicine cats as our protagonists, and what has started out as a small problem when Leafpool first gained POV rights in New Prophecy has kind of spiraled out of control as the series has continued. And we'll get to that but I feel like we should probably get a few popular talking points out of the way. First, the medicine cat code. Ooh, that darn medicine cat code. Ugh. <laughs> okay, it's not the focus of this video, but yeah, the way both the warrior code and the medicine cat code work in this series should change or at least be explored in more depth. It's great for things like if there's a cat dying even if they aren't part of your clan, you should probably do something to help them. But then on the other hand, we have rules like you're too important slash holy slash busy to raise a family, so don't you dare have a mate or kids. It's a dumb, bad rule. It made sense during Moth Flight's time, but now that the clans almost always have two or more medicine cats per clan, it's really unnecessary. The argument that it somehow stops medicine cats from having biases over who gets medicine is ridiculous anyway. Medicine cats are going to have biases regardless. They don't just pop out of the ether, they have family and friends. And I'm not really here to talk about how I would like to see all this changed. There's plenty of great AUs and thoughts about this topic out there already if you look for them. What I mostly want to get into is how having a point of view character that is a medicine cat has done a lot more harm to the lore and world building of warriors than good. And what a better place to start than with Leafpool. So before the new prophecy, we never had a medicine cat's perspective. What went on between Star Clan and medicine cats was a bit of a mystery. When we see Cinderpelt accept her role as a medicine cat in Thunder Clan, there are things that she just can't talk about with Fireheart anymore. She's on a whole different playing field. It's implied that she's gained some spiritual wisdom for her close connection to Star Clan and secrets that only medicine cats are allowed to know. But then we get Leafpool's point of view and all that mysticism shatters into tiny pieces. Well, okay, the shattering is not instant. It's more gradual over time. First there's a crack, no big deal, the little bit of mysticism lost is fine for the trade-off of getting to learn a few juicy medicine cat secrets, but then as time goes on those cracks exacerbate and by the time you get to Jayfeather and Alderheart, not only is the mystery and intrigue of Starkling completely shattered, but you're actively stomping at the remaining pieces and just wish you could make it all go away and pretend it never happened. <clears throat> at least that's how I feel. Uh, let me try to explain. 
Star Clan is really at its best in this series when its power within the real world of the cats is small. So small, in fact, that you could even question their existence, like any good old fashioned religion. And in order to do this, Star Clan needs to be something that our main characters don't have open access to. Opening the door for communication with Star Clan makes the stakes feel superficial. When our characters can just get all their answers from a higher power, it feels too easy. When the higher power just ignores them for no reason, it feels fake and forced. When the higher power in question is actually just a group of flawed, dead individuals with no actual gained knowledge or wisdom after death, you really begin to wonder why we even bother taking advice from these guys to begin with. Go take your medication, Yellow Fang, and stay out of my dreams. Your advice is bad and you should feel bad. It's a no-win situation, and I'm sure you can guess where I'm going with this. Medicine cats have that direct link to Star Clan. It's tied directly into their job descriptions. So reading from their point of view, where everything they do is dictated by Star Clan's will, quickly becomes an exercise in frustration. Leaf Bull, Jay Feather, and Alderheart fall into the pitfall of waiting around for Star Clan to tell them exactly what they should do. Because of course they do. That's their job. They'd be bad medicine cats if they didn't. But this doesn't make for interesting conflict, and it gives our characters very little room to grow. Even our grumpy boy Jay Feather here is a pretty devout follower of Star Clan, even if he calls him stinky and dumb every chance he gets. <laughs> Bless his little heart. Instead of taking action, our main characters are forced to wait until Star Clan deems it necessary to take action, which conveniently usually only happens near the end of the book. Not to say that this formula is always bad. In fact, there's some parts of the books where this direct link to Star Clan is pretty iconic. Leafpool being told to follow her heart by Feathertail and Spotted Leaf led to one of New Prophecy's most interesting Leafpool plot lines. Jay Feather's super connection with Star Clan had so much interesting setup and potential. And Alderheart's mission from Star Clan that he fails in the very first book is a great place to start with his character arc. The problem, however, is that nearly all of these moments end up being undermined later on in the books themselves. Leafpool's runaway one-night stand with Crowfeather gets all kinds of frustrating as Starclan later denies their involvement and throws Leafpool and Squirrelflight under a bus. Jayfeather's potential is never fully realized and in fact becomes the biggest nail in the coffin for taking Starclan seriously. And Alderheart's character arc in Vision of Shadows is less of an arc and more so that Alderheart just woke up in the raging storm as a completely new and more confident cat. Now, I do want to take a moment to say that Shadow Sight easily has the most going for him as of right now when it comes to this problem. Because no one is able to contact Star Clan. Oh my god, this should have been our first Medicine Cat POV since the beginning. Could you imagine if we had never had Leaf Pool or Jay Feather's chapters in these books? And then you get to the broken code and you get Shadow Sight and you're thinking, oh man, finally, a Medicine Cat perspective. I can't wait to see what it's like when they talk to Star Clan. And then BAM! Shadow Sight and none of the Medicine Cats can talk to Star Clan. Wow, that would have been amazing just really pull the rug out from under you and keep up the mystery of how warrior ancestors operate oh if only we were blessed enough to live in that timeline okay so we've established talking with star clan is a problem we've figured that out now but as we can see with shadow sight there are ways to write around this problem and still make it interesting but that's not the only problem. Writing from a medicine cat's point of view has been a crutch for the authors for a really long time. So over the years, there are several other problems with the medicine cat perspective that really need to be addressed. As I said earlier, medicine cats are secondary leaders in their clans. The only cats on par with the authority that medicine cats have is leaders and arguably deputies. Plus, due to the whole regularly speaking with a higher power thing that medicine cats do and their completely different set of skills they need to be trained for, medicine cat characters are inherently a bit isolated from the rest of their clanmates, which makes it all too easy for the writers to just never write in any communication between the medicine cats and other non-medicine cat characters. 
In fact, the new prophecy addresses this problem with a bit of a hand wave and a, well, that's just how these things work, I guess, when the friendship between Leafpool and Sorreltail just suddenly vanishes in order to isolate Leafpool completely so that she could have her mutual pining slow burn romance with Crowfeather. The Medicine Cat friend circle is small, and it's implied that Medicine Cats just don't really socialize with the rest of their clanmates, which just adds to the growing problem that Warriors has of having these huge community of cats that we know barely anything about. And as far as being spiritual leaders of their clans go, it's becoming a running trend for leaders to just completely ignore their medicine cats in order to keep the tension high and give the story conflict. It's harder to relate to and to root for characters who hold all the power over their communities, which medicine cats should, realistically speaking, have. So instead, over and over and over again, we either get medicine cats keeping their visions or opinions a secret, or make the leaders of the clans completely disregard what they have to say. It's a really complicated set of problems to write around, and it's why as a storyteller you should always be careful with how much you show your hand when it comes to world building. While I love these characters, their roles as medicine cats in the story has done some irreversible damage to the lore of warriors. I'm very happy to see the Broken Code arc attempt to get a handle on at least part of this problem, but it would probably take something as drastic as a full-on reboot to properly address these issues. Anyway, that's enough yammering on from me. I had a fun time creating these mini portraits of Leafpool, Jayfeather, Alderheart, and Shadowsight. I'll have them up on my Redbubble if you're interested in getting one or two of them and stickers or something like that. Let me know who your favorite medicine cat is and let me know how you would maybe tackle some of these problems I mentioned today in my video. I'm really interested to hear what your thoughts on this one are. Remember to listen to your doctors in these troubling times. Have a wonderful day and stay inspired. <laughs>